Hey, thanks for coming. You, you obviously, I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> so, um, I'll talk about corals today. And, um, you know, as usual, we'll, we'll have the. If you like to. <laughs> so, as usual, we 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 have so yeah okay. Ali has no yes today, <laughs> and we have the, who's an old friend from NGO work in Madagascar. Hey. And, um, so as usual, there is the free seminar on Friday, and then you know uh, there's a it's a longer seminar for the projects the next day, and this week we actually added two more in case you know the in-house guests who want to do these. Uh, supposedly, a, a bunch of people were going to come from a, a, a three star hotel. We will just come. And um, then, yeah, so you. Oh, I know some of you already bought the book and I appreciate it. I'm not sure if all of you have seen that. So, this is a book about uh, diving physiology. It partially, this is a translation from a book uh, uh, which I wrote in German a few years ago with some new chapters. So, um, this is available as a e book. On uh, Amazon. Uh, now, uh, you probably know what, uh, what I was measuring here on Google Earth. Uh, so, this is, this is a screenshot of Google Earth. This is the east coast of Australia. And then this structure here is the Great Barrier Reef. And then, you know, like I, did, I didn't even trace the Barrier Reef you know, along its length, I just go to a straight line north to south, and it's 1,500 kilometers. And, and this is a coral built structure, of course. So, you know, we're starting here in Hakai, to the, you know, the very uh, northernmost point of Australia, almost. And so this is a massive structure. You can see it from space, you know, obviously this is a satellite image. And, uh, the, you know, this, this determines the, the whole, uh, you know, physical oceanography of this part of the world. Right? the wave pattern. So the you corals know, are a significant part of the you know the way the world looks in shallow waters in the tropics and in the subtropics. And then you know, at the same time as a scuba divers, you know uh, you know when you dive in a coral reef you see you have the, the small view, right? You have you know this the millimeter to tens of meters. View. And you see what a very incredible biodiversity it is, right? So there is, yeah, obviously, corals are home to thousands of species of fishes, uh, um, you know, echinoderms, uh, worms, other you know, uh, mollusks, other invertebrates. So, so this is a very uh, rich uh, habitat for a lot of organisms. So, you know, not only are they important in shaping the the coastlines of many parts of the world, but they're always important for, you know, being a home to, you know, a, a big uh, community of organisms. Now, so basically what I would like to talk about in the next 20 minutes or so, what are we even talking about when we are talking about uh, corals? What kind of organism is this? And how are they related to other reef builders? and particularly the sponges. And um, so this is essentially, uh, so you know, the ruby trees, right? Corals, mostly hard corals, sponges, and calcified algae, which are interesting, but uh, they're not particularly pretty, and I don't know that much about them. So I'm really going to talk about the first two groups. And, um, so all corals belong to the mid area. And uh, like uh, in German, that we have a nestletier, which means essentially stinging animals, right? Which is a pretty good description. So uh, what are uh, these mid area, right? So this is a, a large uh, phylum. So essentially, this is the biggest group of animals in the animal kingdom, uh, the phylum, and they, uh, they include the jellyfish. And if you look at one of these nice drawings, so this is by the famous 
Spectrum and Mind Center and then it's Young Speaker, right? So uh, there was just, this was a time when art and science were, you know, close. So if you, so this drawing is hopefully pretty as well as very uh, illustrative of what's going on. So here you see the, uh, the tent of this, but then you see this umbrella. And then the umbrella. <laughs> Hello, it's okay. <laughs> So, Ella, do you know on which one is drinking water? Huh? Can, you, can you just give me a glass? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, if you look at this, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it. This umbrella essentially has two layers. There's an outer layer and there's an inner layer. And this is, this is fundamentally simpler than the, uh, the basic anatomy of any other animal. Thank you so much. <laughs> And uh, whether you're looking at a flatworm, a mollusk, an insect, crab, or a human, there are like in embryonic development, uh, there, are, uh, there are three layers. There's an outer layer, inner layer, and, and a middle layer. And this middle layer gives rise to a lot of the more sophisticated organs, right? But, you know, all the internal organs, uh, and uh, I believe the muscles are from this middle layer that is completely lacking in this animal. So, you know, I, I would not call this, this Nidarians, yeah, this jellyfish and forest. Um, they're, they're primitive in a biological sense, right? That they just have not evolved this. That doesn't mean that they are, yeah, primitive is a technical term here, right? It doesn't mean they're useless, right? Like, you know, look at that guy, it's a real primitive guy, right? It's, it's, this is a, it's a different use. It basically means the anatomy is just uh, simple. And um, so the essential plus, you know, there is no, there's no uh, digestive tract, right? There's no mouth. There's the one opening where the food goes in and the waste products come out. So basically, the same thing is true with this uh, jellyfish as with corals. And, uh, and the thing is that the jellyfish essentially evolved to be very venomous and soft. The corals then evolved in a different direction, which is they, uh, they evolved to create these very hard skeletons, you know, these calcium carbonate skeletons, and this is what makes the reefs, right? This is why there's such a, a solid reef structure. And uh, on top of that, they developed to be colonial. So, you know, here you see one cup, right? So each jellyfish is one umbrella. Whereas uh, if you imagine the chorus, you just turn these umbrellas, these cups upside down, and, and then you, you add either, you know, dozens or millions on top of each other. So, Basically, the, the chorus evolved to have, uh, you know, to work in groups and to have hard skeletons. And on top of that, and I'll cover more of that tomorrow, uh, they evolved to have the symbionts. So these jellyfish are all translucent. Whereas, uh, you know, if you look at chorus, they are typically brown, blue, you know, shades of yellow. That's not the color of the actual coral animal. It's the color of an algae which lives inside of the coral. And, and these algae do, you know, just like the plants here, they uh, conduct photosynthesis, right? They take sunlight and turn it into sugar. And these algae do that in the bodies of the corals and then essentially for getting protection in these hard skeletons, they provide some of the sugar to the coral animal. So it's, it's basically, you think of a, of a coral as a evolved a couple of sophisticated tricks, meaning make a hard skeleton, work in large colonies, and take the symbiotes. Now, make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, the, okay, so what, there is this, the, the uh, Cnidaria, this uh, stinging animals, there's a subgroup and the antosaur, which means, what does it mean? Flower, so that's just a water buffer, that's just an example for some animal. 
for these are flower animals, right? And it makes a lot of sense. Because if you look at a, at a beautiful small anemone, it almost looks like a flower, right? And then uh, what I would like to tell you about in the rest of the talk is how are all these corals related to each other? And I think, you know, there is the, the, there's some yeah, interest to the taxonomist who sits in his you know, museum or spa. I think this also informs the diver, right? So once you, you understand the species, but you will really understand, ah, you know, this is this group. I, I roughly know what this is. Now, so this is a family tree, right? So you can make a family tree for your own family. So there will be your grandma and your grandpa. They have like eight kids, right? Typically. And then, uh, you know, the next generation, maybe they had some people have no kids, some had three, and then, you know, at each generation, there's a branch point. Here, there's a branch point. This is evolution, right? So this started roughly 520 million years ago for animals. Now, at each branch point, like a very simple, essentially anemone-like organism, uh, split, you know, one lineage remained on anemone, and the others essentially became more like a coral. So they started developing as helicopter, right? So each branch point here is not a single generation, but it's, it's essentially a big step in evolution. Now, um, we can, so these, when I teach this in university, I always ask the students, have you ever seen a tabulata in Coron? And then some students would say, yeah, I think I think I saw one in Chatham. And then I go like, like, you must be really old, because they went extinct like 250 million years ago. And then, so, so the three groups on the right, uh, these were essentially, these went extinct before the dinosaurs evolved a very long time ago. So this, this, you know, you can find in, in Austria and in Switzerland, right? In some of the, the really old uh, limestone deposits. Now, what, uh, what are we having on the left side? So this is, these are all the animals we see in the reefs here. And what are these? So this, uh, these are just the uh, regular actinaria. These are the regular anemones. You know, which we all know, and, right? and you know, there are many hundred different species. So these beautiful large anemones, which are the, the home to the anemone fish, and you know, the much smaller species. All of these are in, uh, in the group the actinarians, right? These are the, the conventional anemones. So these are essentially a to the, uh, the coral. Now, have you seen something like this? I'm almost sure. And, and you know, there are like actually a couple of them right there, right, right at the house. So this is a tube anemone, which it somewhat looks like an anemone, like an anemone, doesn't it? Right? But it's actually, so you see it's on a completely different branch of that family tree. Of this is a coral. I uh, know it's an anemone, uh, but a, com a completely different anemone. So you, you can compare it like a, like a bat and a bird. They can obviously both fly, right? But, but totally unrelated, right? One is a mammal, one is a bird. And, and so, so this is an organism which essentially lives in the same way, right? It's, it's solitary. Hey, very nice to see you. It's solitary, so there's a single pollen and there are the same decades which catch, uh, you know, small fish and crustacean, but it's, you know, conventional and anemones. Like, a, like they probably split um, almost half a billion years ago. So, you know, they're, they're just doing the same thing, but it's at a very distant from the day. So I, th I think this is, this is worth pointing out. Obviously, th these are great hosts for the sexy shrimp, there are all kinds of shrimp always that they're based on. Um, now, this is another group, right? So this, this is the next branch point from the tubular. So these are the soft corals, or they're also sometimes called octocorals. Why? It's pretty obvious, right? So that if you count these tentacles of each coral, they're always eight, right? 
and uh, they also, well, so of course, also makes sense. They don't have that hard calcium carbonate skeleton which builds these reefs like the hard ones. That doesn't mean that they have no skeleton. Very often they have these needles in their bodies and the needles can either also be calcium carbonate, you know, which, which is the same mineral as bone, right, or, or the hard cores, or they can be um, essentially proteination. So it's more similar to like a, like a horn of a, a cow, right? So these are these hardened proteins. So you, if you, I don't recommend breaking stuff, right, but if you have a hard core, it's not necessarily very floppy, but when when they die, uh, there will not be a, a solid skeleton, right? Things will fall apart. It will not build the reef. So you know, so these are the octopods, right? How do they get the the color? How do they? Get the color? Yeah. So it's a yeah, very good point. So I, I I mentioned very good point actually. I mentioned these algae, which live in the corals. This has evolved from multiple times uh, independently. So also the soft corals have that. Generally, it's a lot of work in terms of uh, you know energy you need to invest to to build a hard coral skeleton. And that, and that's also you know like when kids grow, right? A lot goes in the bone. Uh, so the soft corals typically they're less dependent on the algae than the hard corals. The hard corals, if there are no algae, then that's called coral bleaching, right? So this is a, like a, I'll cover that in more detail tomorrow. This is this effect when it gets too hot uh, for more than a few weeks, and this can can the, the exact numbers depend on the corals. Then the, uh, what happens is that this uh, algae produce too much reactive oxygen. So they, pro you know, it's the same stuff what happens to you when you dive too deep with nitrogen, right? You have these free radicals, right? When you go with uh, with nitrogen 32 to 50 meters, right? Why is this dangerous? Because they're of the the oxygen radicals. So the same thing happens then that this uh, algae produce oxygen radicals and the corals just go, what? Oh, all right, you, you need to leave now. And then uh, that, that's a good emergency, emergency response. It's a response which is reversible. So if it cools down, they can take on new algae. If that doesn't happen in time, they will typically, essentially, they will die from starvation. So because to, it's it's very energy intensive to be a hard core, you know, to, to build all these skeletons, that takes a lot of sugar, essentially. And, you know, the sugar to make energy to to get from, uh, to get that calcium carbonate fixated into a skeleton. So so the soft core, their, their skeletons are much uh, less important, right? So, so they, when they lose their LG, they typically they're typically not as affected. And to actually to continue on with that, have you? We don't have a lot of giant clams here, but essentially a giant clam is essentially a clam which which works like a coral. So so they have these beautiful colors too, right? And they're men. And these are also LG. So the, the giant clam actually doesn't really live off from filter feeding the water as much. It's like a little clam, but it's it's acting like a coral in that it's uh, you know getting all this energy from the sunlight. And the giant clams can also bleach, but also in the, the giant clams are more like the soft corals, that the bleaching will typically not kill them, whereas the bleaching will kill the the hard corals. So, you know, next, so the, um, I wanted to show you this, so this is a, a very, you know, this is a kind of left here, so I believe this is in Capo, in Malapaspa, and this is actually in Okinawa. So what you get with a lot of these uh, soft and hard colors, 
you get very diverse shapes. So you get these growth forms which partially depend on what kind of coral is that, but it also depends on is this coral growing in five years or in 25 years? Is it growing in strong current or is it growing in a place where there's one snow color? So, uh, so you know, this, this is a good example of that from soft coral. Finally, right, so this is, I think that's actually a job. So this is a, a, a skeratinian coral or a hard coral or sometimes also called a hexacoral. So in the case of the soft corals, they always age tentacles. In the case of the uh, hard corals, they are six or multiples of six, right? 12, 18, right? Something like that. And, and so, so these are really quite uh, these are amazing animals, right? So as you've probably seen all of you and I may have this coral. <laughs> and, and you know, it's really, what's the, the reason the size of this is probably two and a half meters across. So, you know, these are, these are gigantic animals, you know, uh, building these, these uh, huge structures. And you can also see, you know, even on the upper picture, there are uh, three species of fish. So, so these are, uh, you know, the Caratinian hard forest and hexacorals. There are two more groups then, which I have not covered. And I actually don't have, excuse me. Um, I don't have very good pictures of them. You, you sometimes see them when you go out in the deeper. You, you kind of see the picture of this. So the karate morphs are the one piece. What these are, they are like almost hard coins. So they have the same six-fold symmetry. They're colonial, but the one step which they have not taken is to build hard skeletons. And actually, once, sometimes when you go deeper on walls, can you see the picture of the Soantids? They look like little buttons, right, which cover a spot. So when you get deeper on walls, or when you go in a crevice, right, uh, why would they be in a crevice? They have very little sunlight, right? So the hard curves can you know, these are essentially sister groups which which have almost made it to be in chorus, but not quite. Well, how do they get their energy? Ah, uh, filter feeding, okay. right? So, so the, the main... Instead of the sunlight... Exactly, yeah. so so even hard corals filter feed. And when you go diving at night, right, you often really see the tentacles come out, right? And, and then, they, you know, they, they will catch shrimp for fish lava. This is probably in a hard coral, it would be something like 20% of the energy intake. In a soft coral, it would be much more. And with the soantids and coralimorphs, it would be 100%. So, in an anemone, it would almost be 100%. So, uh, yeah, a few more comments, right? So, this is a black coral. And this, I think, is on a shipwreck. And actually, that these black corals do very well on artificial reefs, right? Like a nuka and on, on shipwrecks, like a man-made structure. Why is it called a, a black coral? It's a uh, it's called, it's black when you can't bring it up and dry. It. But the skeleton what, is black. Exactly, the skeleton is black, and, and then people would make uh, tulare, right? And uh, hopefully not anymore. But then it's, hopefully it's yellow. And it's protected it's, now, actually. Next, it should be. Yeah. Hopefully, and uh, people stick to that, right? So, uh, are you familiar with Hunter S. Thompson? Yeah, anyway. And so, then, these are, they look a bit like soft coral, but they're actually hexacoral. So they are, they're close cousins to hard corals. Uh, and, and this is a bit of an outlier, right? So they, they don't build hard skeletons and reefs, but, you know, in terms of the evolution, they, they split last before they split from our uh, Then, okay, so there is uh, one more group which is, which is what we touched, well, it's cousin, which are the sponges. And now there are, there are reefs in, in deeper areas, so there's actually a very large reef are right at the mouth of the Amazon River in Brazil. 
and that's mainly composed of algae and of sponges. And so, so there are large reef structures in the world where sponges really play a major role. And, and you know, here, of course, there are also many different species of sponges. It's, it's worth pointing out what, what is a sponge, right? And it's one, one more step great in terms of, you know, complex body design from a coral. And again, I want to show you this beautiful drawings by Heckel. So a uh, sponge is, in, in a sense, a coral is closer related to us than to a sponge. A sponge is really the first, the, you know, the simplest animal possible do have a nervous system and you can, again you, you shouldn't touch stuff but sometimes you can touch stuff so it, there are all these leather corals in Upper Island right you know like in the shallow parts they look very leathery and they have these thin uh, polyps coming out I'm sure you've seen them many times if you poke them at one point actually the polyps start retracting and that, uh, that propagates right so there's like it's almost something like pain reception in a coral, right? It's, it's, it's much, obviously, it's not like a, like a human or a mouse nervous system, but it's, it's a nervous system. A sponge has nothing. So a sponge is essentially, so you can see up there, uh, it is a large filter. That's what it is. There, there are few different cell types, but there is no, you know, the, the sponges grow in a very flexible way, right? There's no you know, biologic uh, outline, you, we're going to make a cup, and then they're going to be tentacles, right? So this is one mass of cells with holes through, and then they, they create, with the cilia, they create a, a water current, and then they take out plankton from the, the water. So, you know, obviously, so these are also some of the oldest animals which have ever been found. Right? So, you know, more than 600 million years old, uh, the old sponge fossils. So this, these are important reef builders, uh, but they're really like in, in terms of both the, you know, the outline of their bodies, as well as in you know, how they're related to corals, they're, they're, they're very distant. Very interesting. So, I hope you found this interesting. I'm not sure if you have plans tomorrow. Yeah. Aleha will join. <laughs> and uh, so tomorrow, you know, I want, I want to go more over the coral growth forms. Types of coral reefs, very interesting, actually many of them in the Philippines, about more about their relationship with the symbionts, about the uh, relationship, with, of course, with fish, particularly with surgeon fish, which are algae eaters, right? And the algae are competitors of the corals. So there are many interesting dynamics, great to corals, and, and what Yes, of course. You were talking about um, the algae and the coral yeah. with the um, bleach. And you said if the temperature goes below or reduces again, yeah. that maybe the uh, algae then comes back. Yeah, yeah, what right. is that, what's that time frame? I know uh, it's not an exact time frame. Yeah, you know, I, I believe the. Normally, I think it's something like five weeks. So it's really a very short time. Yeah, day. yeah. It, it's something like that. And then, um, so, so, yeah. It, it depends a bit on the type of coral. There are some corals in the Red Sea where it gets really warm because it's kind of shallow, which do very well in terms of resistance. Others not so. You know, here we are in a lucky position, right? So here, there's what's called the, the Bohol jet. So there's a strong current coming from Bohol, and, it, and it's several hundred meters deep between the Bohol. So essentially, it just shuttles a lot of water. But there's actually, there's a prediction for this year that there's a, a strong El Nino year, right? I'm sure you've read about that, right? So that there's in the, in the Pacific, there is warm weather systems which shuttle off over here. So probably, hopefully not here, but unfortunately probably other places in the Philippines and in, in places like Micronesia, it's to be feared that there will be significant. 
Smaller dives again, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's, they always get heat dry. Now, Is there a way make the temperature uh, uh, increase two degrees this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, um, the, it seems that there's just no good buffer there, right? Yeah. So after the cold week, yeah. then if it goes cold, then Well, well, so basically it's, this is what's going to happen. So there will always be a few corals and they can just, you know, locally grow. And there will be, uh, you know, so the corals essentially reproduce asexually like plants, but also sexually. And you would have that, you would have these big spawning events, right? That there would be like mass release of sperm and eggs, and then you would have millions of lava. And then this lava would, you know, spend weeks in the water column, and then at one point they would want to settle. So hopefully, you know, there would be enough lava around that there's a bleach tree and they can settle. They're, they're more, so this is partially, I'm going to drop the button more. I still love you if you don't drop the ball. <laughs> but then um, it depends a bit on the kind of condition the reef has been in between. So if you have a lot of surgeon fish, they will graze a lot of algae. And you can actually see that really nicely in, in uh, Poblacion, down in South. So there would be, there was actually damage, right, from the bed. But then when, when the energy are kept low, there is space for the new corals to uh, settle. If, if the surgeon fish have all been turned into Pinilao, uh, then the essentially the, the corals have outcompeted the, the algae have outcompeted the corals. So this filamentous algae which just leave no space for the new corals to set. So it's basically uh, you know if you go to the uh, at the have you met have you me, have you me? Have you me? Have you me? a friend of cancer. So I've had the chance to go to the sanctuary in Apple, which was almost completely destroyed after Hayan and Odette. Odette. No, not Odette. Hayan and Yolanda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 2012 and 13, right? And then there, okay, so in Upper Island, there's no agriculture, right? Not very much. So there's no runoff. Then, you know, yes, there's fishing, but not so much. So they're still searching fish. And in that area, they even banned fishing completely. So this reef very much recovered in 12 years. It's crazy. It looks really nice. And, and, the, and so why, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of, you, you can do this analogy to a person. So let's say you, you have a cold, and then you, you're kind of already like a heavy drinker, and you don't eat any vegetables, right? It's going to take you much longer to come back. Whereas if you're in shape, you know, you're, you're going to recover from any disease. Uh, and so, same thing with the reef, really. And it comes down to that. Yeah. And the, you know, runoff is of my big feet in Naples, right? So, like, I've seen reefs in up north in Sagai, which didn't look very nice at all because there's just so much sugarcane growing and the other fertilizer. Rose algae and then the coral just is, is at a disadvantage in, uh, in fighting this algae. It, it pretty much comes down to that. No, no. It's negative, right? And then, you know, if you sometimes you see these bleached horrors, right? So first they are they're like really like they're like that, right? This color. And then that's like for two weeks, and then the algae start growing. And then after six months, there's like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Exactly. So, that, so that's really bad, right? So that's basically that you know the the competition by the LG has has taken over. So it's it's tricky, right? With grief recovery, you like another issue is where do the lava come from? So if you know there's like a reef here, right, that's destroyed, and then the still a nice reef. 50 kilometers away, right? You would get a source of lava. But if you have cases like that, again, the Maldives, right? Where you have this whole archipelago and like big paths get bleached, and you know what's next is the shales, right? It's going to be much harder for, for a lava to get to. So it's, it's complicated, but it, it kind of comes down to how healthy is the area, how healthy are the areas around it. Yeah. You know, yes, sometimes. I have to ask again. So it's it's always in the summer, tied to a full moon. Have you have you seen that lately? No. I, I don't I don't remember seeing that. Like like often you have to be really lucky, you have to get like a exact rights and you know it might be just a few days. Right? Yeah, yeah. So you have to, sometimes, you know, like my friends in Puri now, you know, in the Philippines, they will, they will like really monitor, right? And then they will take samples or something. You can tell that they're essentially like ready to spawn, right? And it, it, here you, you would have to be a bit lucky. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Can I use the opportunity to ask you, you can show them later, if that is a coral or a, what is it? Uh, how it's possible to change in the nation? To me, that looks like a sacral food one, right? I, I think 